Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on pancreatic anatomy. This video is going to be more focused on the embryology of the pancreas as well as the pancreatic duct anatomy, anatomy of the ampulla, very commonly asked questions in this area as well as important for various pathology and surgery of the pancreas. So we have already seen the first part that is back to basics where we saw the parts of the pancreas and in this video we are going to focus on the embryology. So when it comes to embryology of the pancreas, it is very important to remember that there are two different processes or buds that arise during the development and it are these buds are the structures that are going to give rise to various parts of the pancreas. So as you can see in this very old illustration, but a very nice illustration, this is the dorsal pancreas DD. So dorsal pancreas arises from the duodenum or embryologically known as the dorsal mesogastrium. Whereas the ventral pancreas is a diverticulum from the pars hepatica or the hepatic diverticulum. As the development proceeds and all this happens in the first month, remember that the fusion of the buds is over by week 6 okay, of the embryo. So what we are understanding is that the dorsal pancreas keeps growing. It is towards the left only. Whereas the ventral pancreas needs to rotate, right? So dorsal pancreas from posterior to left, whereas the ventral pancreas needs to complete a significant rotation. The ventral pancreas has two parts, right and left. The right one usually stays, whereas the left part of it regresses. Finally, the ventral pancreas goes behind the duodenum and joins with the dorsal pancreas from behind, right? This is important to remember that the rotation is from right to left and posteriorly. So it goes from behind and then rotates and joins the dorsal pancreas. You can also see the development of pars hepatica and the biliary system also going along with it. So everything rotates behind the duodenum for its fusion with the dorsal pancreas. So the pancreas is a fusion of ventral and dorsal bud. As we have already seen, the hepatic diverticulum gives rise to ventral buds, which are usually two in number, and they form the inferior portion of pancreatic head and the uncinate process. As we know, the uncinate process is behind, as we have seen in the first video. So that part of pancreas, which is posterior or towards the spine, is formed by the ventral bud because it rotates from right to left from behind, right? The left part of ventral bud usually regresses. We will see what happens when it does not regress in upcoming discussion on anomalies in the origin and formation of the pancreas. So the ventral duct between the dorsal ventral fusion and the major papilla forms the duct of which sub. We will see how this duct is formed in the next slide. Now coming to the dorsal bud, that is the dorsal mesogastrium, okay, or the duodenum as we know it. The dorsal bud gives rise to anterior part of head, neck, body, and tail. So most of the pancreas is formed by the dorsal enlarge, as you can see here, whereas the ventral enlarge only forms the posterior part of head and the uncinate process. As the gut rotates, Ventral enlarge rotates to right around the posterior side of the duodenum to fuse with the dorsal bud. So now coming to the duct formation, you can see that this entire big part of the pancreas is formed by the dorsal bud, whereas only this small part of pancreas is formed by the ventral bud. So the duct of the dorsal bud is something like the black line and the ventral bud duct is the red line. Now, as the two parts fuse, what happens is that major part of dorsal duct and the ventral duct entirely, so this entire structure that is thicker yellow, forms the main pancreatic duct or duct of Virsa. 
the small remaining part of dorsal bud may disappear or may remain there and form the accessory duct of Santorini. So this is how the pancreatic duct is formed. Dorsal duct upstream of the dorsal ventral fusion point, that is this part, forms the main pancreatic duct or the duct of Virsak. It is this main pancreatic duct that will unite with the common bile duct at the ampulla of waiter or the major papilla, right? The dorsal duct downstream, that is this part, the thin part of the dorsal ventral fusion point persists in only 25% of patients. So this structure is present only in 25% of patients as the duct of Santorini, accessory pancreatic duct, and it drains at papilla minor. So minor papilla is proximal to major papilla and usually this distance is 2 centimeters, commonly asked question. So minor papilla is proximal, it drains the duct of Santorini. Major papilla is the union of common bile duct with the main pancreatic duct. Now, when we understand this anatomy, in cross-section, if you see in sagittal section, that is cutting a person from front to back, the duct is closer to the posterior pancreatic surface. And this is important to remember, that the duct is closer to the posterior pancreatic surface. When we see the duct in CT scan or in ERCP images, you will understand that the duct has different orientation when it comes to anatomy. So there is a descending course, the duct is descending then forms up. This is usually the bend where the dorsal duct goes and meets the ventral duct. It can have a vertical course. What that means is that the joint and the ventral duct orientation is vertical. It can have a sigmoid course, right? And a loop shaped course. And this loop is difficult, but it is very important to understand on your scans because your endoscopic procedures may become difficult. Even the surgeries may be difficult if the course of the duct is loop shaped, right? So it can be descending course, vertical course, sigmoid course, or loop shaped course. Now, coming to the ampulla, there are three different types of ampulla. Type 1 is where the pancreatic duct opens into the common bile duct. Type 2 is where the PD as well as the CPD open close to one another where there is no ampulla. Ampulla is mouth as we have seen in previous videos. So this structure is not formed. So there is no ampulla but they both still open very close to each other. In type 3, PD and CPD open into duodenum completely separately. When it comes to the sphincters, and these sphincters are important because it prevents the reflux of pancreatic juice and biliary juice into each other's ducts. The two sphincters in the lower end of the common bile duct are superior and inferior collidocal sphincters. So there are two sphincters in the lower end of common bile duct, which are superior and inferior collidocal sphincters. There is a pancreatic sphincter, and then there is the main ampullary sphincter of odi, right? So there are four sphincters that you need to remember in this area. The superior and inferior collidocal sphincter, the pancreatic sphincter and the ampullary sphincter of odi. When we are doing endoscopy, and this is a commonly asked question that the duodenal mucosal folds are arranged in a T-shaped configuration. So this T and the join of the vertical and horizontal limb of T is where the ampulla can be identified in the endoscopy. Now coming to variations, and this is important to understand because a lot of diseases present in cases where there are variations in the origin of ampulla and in orientation of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. So there is something known as a bifid configuration. You can see here that the major duct is still the main pancreatic duct, but the accessory duct also has some drainage, right? So this is bifid configuration. Here you can see that the dominant duct is the Santorini duct. So there is a bifid configuration. There are two ducts draining the pancreas, but the Santorini looks to be prominent. So this is one configuration. There is a configuration where there is no Santorini's duct. 
this is complete pancreas division where the dorsal duct remains the dominant duct and the ventral duct drains only the ventral bud so there is non fusion of the ducts of the two buds resulting in pancreas division and we will see these conditions in the next video where we discuss all the congenital issues that can arise in the pancreas remember that it's a normal anatomic variant but it's a congenital anomaly there is also something known as ansa pancreatica a very commonly asked question remember that ansa pancreatica is nothing but the duct of santorini that forms a reverse s shape and connects with a side branch of the duct of virsam so the division and the orientation of the main pancreatic duct is normal but the duct of santorini instead of communicating with the main pancreatic duct directly communicates with the side branch of the duct of virsam and forms a reverse s shape which is ansa pancreatica so to conclude this part of embryology we have discussed the dorsal bud and the ventral bud the rotation of the dorsal and ventral enlarge we have seen how the pancreatic duct is formed and a lot of questions that are asked in this topic we have covered in very simplified manner the various sphincters of ampulla t shape configuration and finally ansa pancreatica so in the next video we will look at all the various congenital malformations that happen in this area and that are of clinical significance thank you